So in the last question, we talked about how we can get the change in potential using the negative of the integral of the electric field over a certain length or path in space because of course we basically have work here we have force divided by q times distance or displacement will give you some kind of work the flip side of the integration of course is a derivative so you may imagine that the electric field is also given by the negative derivative of the potential what i've written here works well for the 1d case but if it's 3d then this has to be expanded a bit more so to go on a little bit of a definitional tangent here just so you can appreciate the y applicability of what we're doing here in vector calculus which is what we're dealing with because we have calculus and these vector signs it turns out that you can relate a vector field because I talked about how an electric field is a vector field being each point is associated with a vector there is a corresponding scalar field that you can define that kind of holds the same information but in the form of a bunch of scalars which might be easier to deal with and in this case the corresponding scalar field for the electric field is your electrical potential and because it has this integral relationship, the flip side of that in 3D looks a little bit different. The idea is the same. You have the electric field as the negative of the integral, but now you have 3D. So an IJK component, it looks like this. You have to take what we call the partial derivative of the potential with respect to x in the i hat direction, plus the same partial derivative with respect to y in the j hat direction and the partial derivative with respect to z in the k hat direction. This letter here, uh, we're kind of running out of different forms of d's here. So we pick this guy, it's like an upside down row. We pronounce it di, so it's di v di x in this case. What that means is we take the derivative pretty much as normal, but since it's with respect to x and it's partial, even though V does depend on Y and Z, we're gonna treat them as constants for the purpose of this partial derivative. And that's it. And so we do the three different derivatives and we get what we want in IJK separately. In a sense, it's kind of treating in 3D the variation in X, Y, and Z kind of separately, holding the other two constant. So let's do that. First off, we put the V, we put the die die x in front and we're taking the derivative just pretty much like normal and in this case a b y and z are all constants we have one over x squared plus something to the one half chain rule says we take the negative one half in front keep everything the same make this negative three halves negative one half becomes negative three halves in the derivative and chain rule says we put 2x up top and then minus 0 because z and b they're both constants cleaning it up just a little bit gets us that next we do di v di y uh, it'll be very similar to the previous one except that in this case a b x and y are constant in fact this time it's basically symmetric with the di di x case because x and y in this form is symmetrical. So we'll end up with, again, take the negative a x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves, multiply by 2y this time, because y is a variable here. And so we end up with a y x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. And then we'll just sque squeeze in di v di x here, because it's really simple, x and y a and b are all constant so that first term is nothing and we end up with b so minus b so putting it together then not don't forget this negative sign out front so i'll flip all these stuff and we'll add in the i hat as well j hat and then finally the k hat so just to show you how we use this thing to relate potential and electric field in a 3d case